Okay, let's look at relationships. We're playing as Hannah now. We finished up through Isabel yesterday. Okay. Yeah, it's people that lo don't log into, and it's also people that don't want to log in. I hate the little boy chat. <clears throat> it's far too easy for to get them to pay attention. Enraptured, they hang on to my every word and follow my every move. All of it would have been stifling had I not grown used to such stares. Most are respectful, some are hostile, if we are honest. Also, thanks for that support. And a few are downright inappropriate. After all, I am... Kinda right! There's a moment of adjectation as a familiar but less than welcome face approaches me with a suggestive smirk on his face. Of course, I have to keep a benevolent smile and greet him as I greet any good friend. After all, this man can turn heads being famous in his own right. This game is a horror game. Yeah. Officer Lee! What a pleasant surprise. I didn't think you'd have the time to attend tonight's party. Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this up and somebody clip this shit because I don't want to keep explaining it. Good horror, psychological horror, is about buildup, not just jump scares. This game is more of a psychological horror game than just boo, boo, boo. It's buildup, chat. If you watch a horror movie, it's very rare that suddenly it starts smacking you with scare after scare unless it's like a jump scare movie. They have a buildup. It's how the plot works up until you get towards that climax, in which case, then there's the spooks. <clears throat> so this game has a lot of downtime. Thank you, friends. Yeah. He's more of Luke's friend than mine. And I re I'm quite sure I, I only invited his wife. Ha! Got him. Much like I am only friends with the Chief Inspector because of Luke, Luke is only friends with Rochelle because of me. Unlike how I treated Lee, however, Luke will never hide his animosity for the Lee matriarch. It was an odd sort of friendship where we would have had an awkward double date. I don't ever even recall his first name. It started with an N, I think? I might be wrong. Huh. Aside from being the chief inspector of Western Police, his wife, Rochelle Lee, me, Vance, owns a general electronics company, fridges and free fr freezers mostly. What? Oh, I always have time for my favorite social art couple. Might I say, you look positively ravishing tonight. I see the husband isn't with ya. The way he eyes me up is enough to make my skin crawl. I just wish Luke is here to fend off the more, uh, <coughs> unseemly of our peers. You know the ones. Men who are just a bit too friendly, staring too long at my assets, and getting close just because my husband is not here. And to think they have the gall to do this at my own party. In my own house, if I might, I add. But like any high society woman worth her salt, I know how to handle it with grace and dignity. I... I suppose you are looking pleasant as well. Luke's busy with work, unfortunately. Michelle isn't here? Hmm, a shame. I do hope he isn't causing you much trouble. That husband of yours can be a bit tough sometimes, acting like he's still some young bachelor. The wife sends her regards and her apologies, but something came up with a doctor and she needed to attend to it. You know her, being pregnant and all. We make small talk. Rather, I'm forced to do so, as he would not leave my side after finding his place there. Much to my chagrin, I've been extricted from the few who flock in hopes of flattering, for I can tolerate them far better than Lee. He's a nice enough person, and I adore his wife, who's obviously the brains behind the two, but there's something unsettling about him. I do not trust him as much as I want to. He regales me to tales of the Luxburn Police Department, a different affair to the usual gossip I'm privy to, and though I am loath to admit it, it is interesting nonetheless. I expect the topic of business to die out quickly, which will be understandable enough due to the confidential nature of his work. 
But oh boy, was I wrong. So, we're in civvies. I steal and drive off with one of the police mobiles, right? In the mirror, I see the new tent chasing on foot and screaming about theft. The look on his face was priceless when I parked it in the garage. Oh my. You made him chase you all the way home for a prank. What did Rochelle have to say about that? Rochelle has a strange love and hate affair with Lee. He's a married man who did not grow up past his early 20s, judging by the way he acts. Surprisingly enough, they've been married for a good 20 years. A lifetime if you compare it to my marriage of 7 years with Luke. I, on the other hand, well, Luke is no Lee, and I should be happy with that, I suppose. Although my darling did have his moments. Hey, the wife pulled my hair and gave me a good talking to, though. Besides, we live in a flat a block away, so it wasn't much of a grand chase. <laughs> Weren't you living in a house near the countryside? <laughs> Just imagine work, this guy yeah. having to like run this Lord, full block, don't. try to catch him. It's good. No, I don't. But a flat in downtown? I suppose if that's what you like. Oh, it's all right. Hate that tiny place. No matter how convenient it can be for work, 55 square yards are not enough when you need to get away from the wife. Mm. I wouldn't mind a place away from the city. Even started looking at the ads. I spied an interesting lot, actually. Heard it was finally put up for sale. Or that something mansion. You know the one. The one with all the ghost stories. I know what he's talking about, but... There are really only a few urban legends around here. It's the Ermagood Mansion. The Ermagood Mansion, Chad. The Ermagood. She said the thing. She said the thing. Uh, that's wait, the wait. one. How worthy of a king it is. I'd buy it myself, but Rochelle would only gripe if I brought it up to her. Not to mention all the expenses. A place like that would be a real fixer-upper. You also have to find someone willing to work there, with how superstitious people can be. If it becomes a problem, just hire someone to do an exorcism. Actually, I do know of someone who could be up to the task. You remember the Ludgates party at their Christchurch summer residence? Of course. It was an excellent soiree. Everything was so classy, too. Such good taste. Oh, that place was a pigsty until they hired out this interior designer and they turned it into a bloody palace. She worked for the Exodus for their apartment in Soho, too, and they recommended her when we were looking up pieces for our beach house in Porto Colom. I think I have a business card, right? It... No, I must have left it in my other jacket. Anyway, she's called, uh, what's her name? Uh, Mikola, uh, Marianne, hey. I believe, yes. But truly, if anyone were to get that place in Mikola, well, they'd be the envy and the talk of the town. Well... If you put it that way, I might just snatch it up for myself. This place was starting to feel a bit small lately anyway. Sure, a three-story penthouse might not fit the definition of small for some people. Okay, maybe a lot of people. But this isn't big enough to have grand parties in. As it is, I only invited about 30 people to this one and it already feels cramped in here. It certainly would be nice if I didn't have to ride an elevator up and down several floors before I can get anywhere as well. All Luke's words, not mine. Besides, I've been looking for a good anniversary gift. Luke might like this one. Where is he anyway? Luke is dressed to the nines as he usually is, and he looks ready for whatever the day will throw at him. His butler and valet wait at his side just in case he's not as ready as he looks. Oh, sure, that is normal. What is confusing me is the fact that he's on his way out of the penthouse, considering we won't have anywhere to go until much Where later. Where are you going? I am to attend the Triad Autumn Tasting. I do believe I informed you of this two weeks ago. Yes. And might I remind you that I had stricken that off your schedule? Because one, the doctor told you to stop consuming so much alcohol. And two, I informed you a few days ago about the open house we are going to attend in its place. I've even found this marvelous interior designer. Mary Ann McCullough. It's a three and a half hour drive to Cardiff. I don't have time for this. This is like that little party you threw all over again. You don't inform me of it, and you expect me to stay and be a gracious host when I have business elsewhere. You know how I operate, Hannah. Unless this was penciled in, I am sticking to my schedule. If I may intrude, the madam is correct. Your physician did insist you moderate your drinking. Unless you wish to incur acute pancreatitis. 
And you did have this open house penciled in last Wednesday morning. Bullocks! I don't remember doing so! Well, you did. While very hungover, in fact. <laughs> he did. Moaned about me being too loud, but gave it after some pushing. Perhaps this was a bit too cruel manipulative Whose of me, but... Whose side are you on? Come on, Luke! You promised we'd do whatever I want this weekend! At a boy, you're honest, Bennett, though. Fine. I am giving this house <laughs> tour yours Gordon a chance. Bennett. But if it proves to be a waste of time, I am going to Cardiff, and you are going to take a cab home. Are we clear? It's just a bit of, bit of husband and wife tit for tat, isn't it? All couples have their arguments. No, this is fucked up. Once the honeymoon phase is over, as they seem to call it, reality sets in, and you and your partner might not always see eye to eye. Perhaps it has been the years. Seven of them is nothing to scoff at. I just cannot bloody believe I agreed to this. I was really looking forward to the triad tasting. Though sometimes I think it's something a bit more than simple disagreements. And I have to stop myself from wondering what we're There's wrong. always the triad Christmas tasting in Manchester next month, and that'll only be an hour and a half drive. Have I been negative? Have I offended? Have I had to change? Yes! But Cardiff! Certainly any problem can be discussed, as long as he doesn't turn me away. Well, there goes my good mood. Are you happy now, Hana? Why must you treat me this way? Yeah, no, defend yes. yourself. Fuck this I guy. am very happy, Luke. Because for once in a very long time, we are doing what I want. I'm ecstatic. Understood? And this would be perfect if you stop acting like a child who needs their nappy changed. We will be leaving after lunch for the Ermengarde Mansion. You are going to park your rear in the car and keep mum. And you are going to behave during the tour. Needless to say, Luke looks, looks a bit shocked at my outburst. He opened and closed his mouth a few times, struggling to reply before he crosses his arms to look like, well, a moping child. Any more rules for this little excursion of yours, your highness? No wine. No wine? Unacceptable! I am already not allowed to the tasting, and you would deprive me of that simple pleasure? Yep. If I see Sadly, you take welcome, one welcome. sip today, I will put the stocks under lock and key. Do you understand me? Don't forget the bottles he keeps in his dresser. Whose side are you on? <laughs> How many times in one day can you ask that? As many times as I need you, traitor. <laughs> the ride to the mansion is quiet with Luke having stared out the window the entire way, not paying attention to anything around him. Meanwhile, I am conflicted. I don't know if I should apologize for changing his plans like that, but by the time we arrive at the mansion, I see his eyes light up in genuine interest. Apologizing is the last thing on my mind. The whole affair with the Ermengarde mansion is certainly... <clears throat> an interesting experience. The place has been renovated and restored by the owners to what they claim to be acceptable standards. The mansion itself looks like something befitting a fairy tale or a period piece. It is tastefully decorated, and a bit of love and attention, I'm sure, can be a place Luke and I call home. And a number of other prospective buyers that have come from the powerful and wealthy of Luxburn certainly did not disappoint marking this prime estate as uh, prime property. There's the words. The leads are amongst the group who went with the Rose Woman. I saw a few other notable faces. Though, I did not feel like mingling. Unfortunately for every one of them, the rights are interested in, in buying. What's bugging my mind, however, is that Isabel... Isabella. <laughs> still can't get her name right, Chet. <laughs> what is her problem? I still don't understand what is happening. One moment she's scrambling to give us the paperwork to finalize the sale, then she's panicking over some sort of prank letter or another. Dear me, is Isabella alright? Is apparent with the way that she shakes and by the power of her skin, something has really shaken her up. Isabella, do you need me to call that ambulance? I'm worried, but it'll be best if she's attended by someone more familiar with her, like her partner. But even then, the girl refuses Rose off her drink and looks like she's about re ready to make a run no, for it. No, I'm just feeling a bit out of it. It's so weird seeing Isabella like Excuse this. Excuse me, I'll be back. I just need to catch my breath. And she does, so, just as I predicted, her partner falls away like a concerned mother. There's an awkward air among us as we are left in the wake of whatever that was. There's murmur and gossip with each other, words, speaking to the poor daft girl and telling the tale to whoever was not on the act in the first place. 
It did not take long for the woman Rose to return and pull us aside to the study for what I rightfully assume is damage control. Rose invites Marianne in, too, hoping to apologize to her as well. But the woman refuses, saying she's not one of her clients anyway. That leaves myself, Rose, and Luke, the last, all too eager to make himself comfortable in a study he's no doubt already claimed as his own. I can't apologize enough about what just happened. Please forgive Isabella. She's been under a lot of pressure lately. She's young, and all those rumors about this being haunted just got to her head. And it must be this terrible heat, too. Not a drop of rain for days now. Yeah. Are you sure it is wise to just let her go like that? Where is the poor dear? She might get hurt. She's more likely to hurt somebody else, given what just happened. I told her to sit down and take a break. Uh. Already rang someone to pick her up, too. That might be for the best, dear. But please, we're here to talk about the mansion, yes? Why, I absolutely adore it. Don't you, Luke? Some of the rooms will certainly have to be repurposed. We want to change the appliances and have Marianne lead on the decor, but the whole thing is just lovely. I guess. It's certainly a lot roomier than our penthouse. Exactly. Lots of space for guests. Parties. A lot of room for little ones to run around, too. Let's not discuss that right now, Buttercup. Anyway, I do think it would be a shame to let this mansion slip past us. But you haven't even finished touring the house. Well, we like what we've seen. I'm making her job easier for her, am I not? No need for loans or long price negotiations. We just signed a contract and closed the deal. Really, you think the one we will be more happy about an easy sale? I know how does the state agents work? How long they had to wait and how long they had to spend even for just a single sale? Why she should be jumping for joy by now? I'm sure the commission on this mansion is something to sneeze at, even if she has to split it with that Isabel girl. Oh, do you think we could have horses here? Yes, those do sound nice, love. Anyway, if anyone else is interested in buying this property, I assure you that I am able and willing to give a better offer. I... A vineyard would be nice. Or maybe a... Uh, hmm. And we do reward our people quite generously, Rose. So if I were you, I would start on that paperwork. Helicopter pad. <laughs> I pause. And there's a small moment of complete silence where Rose and I just stare incredulously at Luke. It is an unspoken understanding, a rule between the two of us. We just had to put on an act. With our social standing where image matters, it is also important to avoid making enemies. And to follow this rule is an easy feat for me. From youth, I've been well-trained social butterfly, gracious and graceful. Luke, on the Wait, other hand... what, Luke? No, what? Whatever would we need a helipad for? Well, he likes to play the fool sometimes, even if he's anything but. As he throws me a wry smile, I shake my head and beckon Rose over. This is to be our home, and there's nothing she or anyone else can do to change my mind. This is a place that speaks of power and importance, and at the same time of safety and comfort. Perhaps she can, we can even have our family here. There is definitely no better gift than this for our special date. Why, everything here is wonderful. Well, except for this ugly painting in the study. Looks like a bad fake of an Edward Munch painting. Here's the deal. I'm willing to pay 10% higher than your listing price. Yeah, what? Hold on! If anyone tries to outbid us, just add another 5%. That's, uh... I doubt anyone can, of course. That's a painting. Or, you know what? Just add 15% to the listing price, and we can sign all the paperwork now. I guess, if that's what you want. That won't be any trouble. I don't have all the papers now. Didn't think this would be a quick sell. I'll have copies sent to you so you can look over them. And if you'd still like to finish the rest of the tour with Isabella's group, you're more than welcome to. No, I think we're good here. We'd appreciate a private tour of the place a lot more, I think. All right. Should I let Marianne in, then? Marianne? Oh, right, she's been waiting outside the study this whole time, hasn't she? I need to have a little chat with her, move this mansion project Please forward. Please do. There's a look of apprehension when the other woman enters the study. Yet, like a professional, I see the moment she steals herself and masks her worry. Admirable. We have this project, then? Of course. 
Will you be needing anything from us? Having the floor plans would be a great start, just so that I can look at them beforehand. And if you could tell me when you're available for a meeting so that I can include it in my calendar? Oh, is a meeting really all that necessary, Marianne? I guess we can send Johans to help you out. You two can start by getting rid of this ugly painting. Mm -hmm. A hush falls upon the room at my request. What painting? <laughs> And lo and behold, the painting is gone. Its place a mirror stands, which leaves me to look at my own confused odd. expression. Well, no matter. <laughs> That's not odd. Topic at hand. That's haunted. Marianne, you just dear. bought a haunted mansion. You're Eddie Murphy now. Up. <laughs> um, we we don't have anything going on. Let's be honest. We, we're just socializing. So free my schedule. I guess we can free up a day to meet with you. I don't really need another maudlin Monday reading about Maury anyway. The book club can function without me for one day. See, it's just, what time yeah, shall we be seeing okay. each other? How does lunch sound? Beside my house is a higher priority over book club. Why, we can hold the next meeting in this place. Surely the beating grandeur of it all will inspire spirited and lively debate about whether modern day writers could match up to the classics. I might as well clear up the rest of my week to handle whatever affairs buying this mansion requires of me. Any social activity can be put off until the Ermengarde, or rather the Wright Mansion's great debut. I'll have my fill of great parties and gatherings, especially when I organize them myself. That sounds good. Although, with a project at this scope, we might need most of the day to tackle your concerns. A more thorough inspection of the place is also preferable. Breakfast, then. It's a date. It's really not. All right. Monday. Ten o'clock sharp. We'll see you there. I saw that blush. Actually, Marianne suggests that we meet at nine. But who's even awake at that unholy hour? Chet. Chet. Uh, we are. I was lucky enough to wake up this morning before Luke went all the way to Cardiff. We say our goodbyes, we shake our hands, and make it clear without outright saying that we now own the house. By the time we leave, left the mansion ground, sunset is almost upon us. So, you really want to buy this place then? That's a bit of a big impulse buy, even coming from you. <laughs> not that I'm complaining. Yeah, I feel elation when I hear those words from him. It's not every day someone is able to please someone like Luke. He gives away false flattery to sway those who starve his attention and approval. In the privacy of closed doors, he would often express his grievances. He never censored himself in front of me, nor spared me from his criticism. You have been saying the penthouse was getting a bit too small for you. Happy anniversary! Oh. That time of the year already? He forgot about it last year, too. I understand he's a busy man, but... Is that why you want to buy it? Yes. You don't like it? I do. But I remember you used to talk about how you wanted to live next to the beach. Bonte Bay, Kent. I remember the sea water as it stretched on for miles and miles as far as the eye can see. As a kid, I loved our beach trips, swimming all day as much as I could. I was a well-behaved child, and the only time I was ever truly difficult was when I refused to get out of the waters, even when my finger had gone all wrinkly. And, even when they had managed to pull me out of the water, there was always sand castles. The day before we married, I told Luca that I wanted a house on a beach and a dog, and a kid or two. None of those came true, said That was later. a childish dream! Living next to the beach is so impractical if you really think about it. I don't know. It's not a bad thought to see you in a bathing suit every day. Oh my! Maybe another time, love. We still have forever, don't we? He says nothing, only grabbing my hand and holding it tight as we spend the rest of the ride home in silence. I miss the sea. Sick and hovering over the loo at three in the morning, the picture I paint right now is hardly glamorous. A horrible fishy taste is left in my mouth as I throw up what I had for dinner. I hate the acrid stench that fills the lavatory. The burning sensation at the back of my throat is no help whatsoever. I can feel another wave of nausea coming up on me when the door opens. Hannah, what are you doing so early out of bed? I'm fine, love. I must have just eaten something bad. That's all I managed to say before vomiting again into the porcelain throne. Lovely. Just go back to bed, Luke. I'm going to clean up here. I refuse to look at him. I don't want him to see me like this. The last time I had a horrible morning retching in the toilet was during my college years, being the life of the party. 
Thoughtless and shameless, I had thrown away for months of frivolous merriment and pointless hookups. I didn't even retain any connections I had made from that time. <clears throat> sure, they still know of me, and I know of them, but we still do business from time to time. But I've lost touch with anyone who I did see on a daily basis. I hardly have any of the friends when I was still Hannah Evans, a teacher, fellow university students, drinking buddies, the old conquest like Jack. No, don't touch me, sweetie. It's disgusting. I'm disgusting. Luke sits down next to me on the toilet floor to hold my hair, even though, like, even as I cough up more fish. He wipes the vomit from the corner of my mouth and just stares. This is such a weird image. Do I need to fire someone? I don't feel sick. Just feeling a bit under the weather, dear. It's been unbearably hot as of late, hasn't it? I do wish it would rain. Are you sure it wasn't those sweets? <laughs> I told you not to eat those sweets. <laughs> Maybe. Well, don't laugh. Well, <laughs> I can't help if you make that sort of face. <laughs> you start chuckling, and soon enough, he's in a fit of laughter. Yeah, I'm guessing she's pregnant. Which is gonna go badly, I'm sure. Uh, the scene happening next to the loo with sick just makes the whole thing bizarre. And it nearly makes me giggle as well. She, she's actually laughing right now with that face. Oh my god, this is so weird. I try to stifle it though as I smack him on I'm the shoulder. I'm not making a face, Luke. Stop laughing. Shut up. <laughs> when he would not stop laughing, I let my laughter go as bubbles from my own throat. I forget whatever ill feelings plagued me. We were just husband and wife laughing together at a funny face. The little things in life. I let myself go because I know in these moments will not last forever. But I know the terrible things that... But if I just know the terrible things that are to come for us, I would have wished with everything I have then and there the laughter stayed. Hello? Foreshadowing past that? What? Uh, hiya. Come on now. What? What day are we at? The place is bustling with movers, carrying furnishings here and there, along with several trunks of personal belongings taken from our penthouse. Luke watches them like a hawk, making sure everything is handled, nothing is handled carelessly or gets stolen. Careful now! I know your pictures are framed by cheap plastic, but those are framed by African Blackwood and are one-of-a-kind commissioned paintings. Damn. Each one is easily worth a lifetime of what you lot make. Luke, Just Fred do the dishwashers go into the kitchen or the butler's pantry? Pantry buttercup. Careful, that's a maha- No, no, you there, put that down. You do not manhandle a Napoleon Abueva. I can see the exasperation. I had to send the foreman an apologetic glance. Even Johannes rolls his eyes as he goes by. Considering Luke is always like this during a project, Johannes and I have gotten used to it. Poor Marianne, on the other hand, looks a bit stressed at seeing the gigantic mess before we go quickly or going back to work. Everything just has to be perfect exactly the way he wants it. One little thing out of place, one little thing that doesn't fit the image he clearly constructed in his head, Luke gets bent out of Sweetie, shape. Sweetie, why don't we go and sort your suits upstairs? Let your Hans and Marianne and the foreman deal with the rest of the work. We have this, Mrs. Wright. Yes, please do go before a blood vessel bursts. Blood stains are so troublesome to clean. Johannes is the best boy, Chet. Take him by the hand and lead him upstairs to our bedroom. The place has been arranged first, so we can get some rest, no matter what state the rest of the mansion is in. I am definitely glad I can just lie down on this soft, comfy bed after what has been a busy morning. Watching Luke act like his life depended on getting this move done is tiring all on its own. And I think I have a whole day of this ahead of me. I feel the bed dip beside me as Luke sits down with the sun. Well, I can't wait for this to be over. I don't know. It's fun seeing you all fired up. Here at home and not at work, you know. You know I can't always be home, Hana. I have a company to run, unless you've forgotten. I haven't forgotten. You're the one who insists on being there to make sure each and every little thing is under control. I just... I just really miss you sometimes, and I wish you were at home more often. Why, if you're not careful, I might go a bit loopy and I'll start bringing cats home. And soon enough... One day, you'll find yourself going home to a farm just filled with felines that follow you everywhere. Oh, don't bluff. The things would shred up your precious furniture. Besides, you don't even like cats. <laughs> true, true. Dogs are infinitely superior here, of course. Agreed! Hannah is good girl chat. 
But what about the wet dog smell? The mess? I'm not cleaning up after a mutt, no matter how cute. If you think about it, a cat would be better. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always that we can just lie down and talk about these sort of things. To joke around as if we were teenagers again, with very little problem in the way of responsibilities and roles, to your genuine honest to goodness laugh is a rarity. This is just the second time as of late, and I can only see it as a good sign of things to come. All good points. I guess we could just have kids. That is, if you prefer dealing with soiled nappies and sick as opposed to dead birds, mice, and litter boxes. I've already told Marianne about turning the second bedroom into a children's room. I guess sometimes I don't know when I'm crossing the line. I didn't say that I'm a good comedian, did I? Not this again. What? I... I wasn't being serious. It's not something you take the piss out of. 